Okay, so this is Shane, and he says gay people are disgusting and weak. Right here, we've got Greg. Greg says that he is terrified of gay people. And then over here, we have Mark. And Mark says that he feels like homosexuality is a shameful disorder. You know, everybody's like, oh. Okay, now, of course, we know that these, these statements are disturbing and they're shocking, but there's something even more shocking about them. All three of these men are gay. So it's, it's difficult for me to see these guys, you know, because they're, 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 they're in pain, but I think a lot of us see it as self-hatred. Um, and I'm using their words when I tell you that they literally hate being gay. And two of them, have, listen to this, you guys, two of them have even set a deadline for when they plan on going straight. Like a deadline, like when I'm 30, I'm gonna be straight. Okay, so let's start off with Shane. Hi, Shane. Hi, Tyra. Shane, okay, you, you have a deadline. Yeah. What's your deadline for going straight? Well, when I turn 30, I plan to be straight because I'm hoping that it's just gonna be a phase because I never wanted to be gay. And I wanna like have a real family with a wife and a kid and a dog, it's like an old cliche. And I couldn't have that with a guy. I wouldn't be satisfied with a guy. Okay. Like, it's just pure sexual, and I feel like I'm emotionally supposed to be with a woman. Okay, so you said when you're 30. So how old are you now? I'm 19. 19. So 11 years from now, you're going to be straight. Roughly, or I will try to. Oh, you'll try. So what does that mean, you'll be straight? You won't have sex with guys anymore? Well, technically, I guess I'll probably still be gay, but the emotional factor will probably be more to me. So I'm probably just going to try, and I'll probably still have my sexual urges, but... I'm just going to try and force myself to be with a woman, I guess. You're just going to force yourself to be with a woman? Yeah, but I think as long as I'm in love with her, it won't matter to me. But what about sex with her? Are you going to want to have sex with a woman? Well, there was a period when I lived when I, in Kansas when I was 17 that I wanted to have Where, sex with women. Where, in Kansas? Yeah. Uh-huh. I wanted to have sex with women, so I don't know what might come back. I just go through phases where I feel like I can. So what I if you're to. with that woman? Are you going to tell her, I used to be gay, but now I'm trying to be straight with you? And um, I don't mean straight and to the point. I mean straight and have sex with you? <laughs> Well, yeah, I'll probably tell her because she'll find out eventually and then it's okay. up. Okay. So tell me what you feel about gay, gay men. You feel that they're weaker. Yeah, like men are supposed to be alpha and I don't think gay guys are. Like, like alpha, alpha males? Like, like, like Yeah? Yeah. Okay. They're just like, they're so effeminate, the majority of them. I've seen some that aren't, but the majority of them are. And if they want to be girls, then they should just get a sex change or something. But... I don't know. I just think that if you're going to be a guy, then be a guy. So you think the majority of gay men are effeminate? Yeah. Or do you think that just a lot of the more harder acting ones are in the closet? Mm, I don't know. No, no. Okay. No. Tell, tell me what you think about... There's another reason why you don't want to be gay and over 30. What do you think about older men that are gay? Well, I think of them as, like, creepy. When I think of a... Creepy? Yeah. Like, when I think of them, a uh, gay guy that's over 30, I think of them, like, online, talking to, like, 16-year-old boys... Like, trying to get some younger butt. Where do you, why do you think that? I don't know. I just, that's just a stereotype that I have. That you have. Okay. But, yeah. um, and then tell me about male anatomy. You have this thing about with male anatomy. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of the male organs. Yeah? But I'm... But you have one. I'm a pretty big fan of my own. You're a fan of your own? And I can deal with ones that look like mine. Look like yours? Yeah. What does that mean? Like... Like white 19-year-old... <laughs> certain size anatomy? Well, beautiful shape. Okay. Um, so, are you, so when you are, you say you don't like male anatomy. So when you're intimate with a guy, you're not intimate with his anatomy? Not really. I try to avoid it as much as possible. But sometimes, like if it's a hookup, I'll be forced if I want to keep them as a hookup. You have to do things with their anatomy. Yeah, and I'm not a fan of it, but I have okay. to do it. Now let's talk about female anatomy. I'm not a fan of female anatomy either. <laughs> really? I don't know. I think, like, down there, it just really creeps me out. It creeps you out. What does it? What does down there seem like to you? Um, a cave. I don't know. I always. I don't know why, but. <laughs> a I cave. Think, I think of it as a cave that is gonna swallow and never let it come back. Like, like, like it's going to swallow your male anatomy and it's never going to come back? Yeah, it's going to, like, taint it. <laughs> okay, have you ever been intimate with a cave before? <laughs> yeah, I've been intimate with a cave about, like, twice. And how was it? Um, I wasn't really a fan of it, but I... The weird thing is, I've had boyfriends, uh -huh. but I've only had one serious relationship, and that was with a girl for a year. Okay. Which I... Me and her had sex, but... 
it was like pure emotional because we were in love. Like our feelings were so strong for each other. I didn't care. That, I just... that she had a cave. Yes, that okay. she had a cave. Okay, well, joining us now is Tia. This is who he's talking about, Shane's ex-girlfriend. Hi, Tia, stand on up. Okay, so he hates homosexuals, mm -hmm. which means he hates himself. So when you guys were intimate back in the day, did, did you know that he was disgusted by your female parts? Um, actually, not really. I didn't realize that down there I was a cave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so tell me how you feel about Shane now, because he says that he's going to be straight at 30 years old. Well, to be honest, Tara, I feel it's a little absurd because you can't help who you're attracted to. You really can't. And you can't turn it off, but I understand why he would do, why he would think that way. Yeah. So when he's, are you, are you in love with him? I'm in love with Skylar. You're in love with Skylar? Yes. Okay. Skylar, you are what to Shane? Uh, we're best friends. I love the kid. Best friends, but used to be? Uh, we used to be boyfriends. Okay. Relationship. True story. Okay, so let me just break this down a little bit, like I used to do with We Have the Hills on the show. <laughs> okay. Shane used to date Tia, and he loved her emotionally, but not physically because she had a cave. I had a cave. Tia is in love with Skylar, and Skylar is the ex boyfriend of Shane. Yes. Shane does not like male genitalia or female. Or but is gay, them. but hates gays. Basically, I guess me and Skylar are both out of luck, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, it's very confusing. Okay, um, so do you plan on getting with, with Tia when you're 30? We've talked about having kids together, but I don't know, it all depends. Like, if we're still, like, as close as we are now, if we're still together, or if I find someone else, which I can't predict the future. It's, like you said, 11 years, so it's a long time. I am so confused. If I'm this confused, I can only imagine what's going on in your head. It's pretty clear to me. It is? It's clear. Yeah. I'm so when you're good. 30, you're going to look at me and go, ooh, Tyra, you're kind of hot, even though I'll be I'm like 50. I'm already looking at you like that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. So we've been talking to Shane, who hates being gay so much, he has a deadline for when he plans to go straight. Shane plans to go straight when he is 30 years old, which is 11 years from now. Um, Shane, uh, I want to talk about your relationship with Tia a little bit more. The, right. Tia was your girlfriend for how long? For a year. For a year? Yeah. And you guys live together? No, we live together now. We didn't live together then. Okay. You live together now? Yes. Do you have sex with her now? No, it's not sexual. We're just best friends now. So now it's Will and Grace? Yeah. Okay. But it used to be Will having sex with Grace? Yes. Okay. Um, and then you left her. Why yeah. did you leave her relationship-wise? Why did you leave her? I left her because I realized I needed to have that sexual connection with a guy. But I haven't found anything that's like satisfying. And your first sex with a guy was with Skylar. Oh, so well, Skylar was your first sex with a guy. Well, we didn't have sex, but my first uh, rolling around in the bed, yeah, and kissing and making out and stuff, yeah, was with Skylar. What do you think about him, Skylar? About how he feels about himself because he he says he hates gays so much. What do you think? Uh, well, I really think it stems from like him being out of touch with like his own feelings about homosexuality. It's uncomfortable with himself. Do you think he hates himself? That could be. Yeah. What do you think, Tia? Basically, I understand where he's coming from because I think a lot of people, well, a lot of gays that I've talked to, they understand, they want to be like a part of society and its rules and it's very conflicting to them because some of them do want to have a family in a way. What are your feelings uh, toward Tia, Skylar? She said that she's in love with you. Um, Tia's one of my best friends. I, I don't think I feel the same way, though. Have you had sex with Tia? No. Kissed her? Yeah. You guys have kissed? Yeah. Intimately. I know where this show is about uh, gay men that don't want to be gay, that hate being gay and being connected to it, but I, I have to ask you, Tia, why do you think you are attracted to gay men or men that live the gay lifestyle? You know what? Actually, I've always been, for some reason, I've always been that way. Really? I'm always drawn to them. It's been like that for a while. I want to grow out of it. I really do. You I don't know grow why out it's like it? that. We're gonna have to have you come back on another show or something because <laughs> that's like a life of unhappiness, of always wanting somebody that does not want you. A lot of people say it's fear of commitment, a lot of other issues that you could have. And we have somebody here that maybe can help you at the end of the show today. Even though it's not about you today, we're gonna make it about you a little bit at the end of the show and get you some help, okay? Okay, Tara. Right. Um, joining us now is Greg, and Greg um, says he's gay, but he is afraid of gay people. 
So you're afraid of gay people, Greg? Well, I don't think, it, like, when you say afraid, it's not like, you know, cowering back in fear. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that I'm just really afraid of, you know, their self-confidence. Like, they can be who they are, and it feels like I can't really, like, be myself, and I have to have, like, a, a straight face on, you know, for most of the time, you know, to pass through society and, and stuff like that, but... So are you afraid to hang around other gay people? You, you feel uncomfortable? Yeah, it's just, like, an uncertainty of, like, you know, what you expect. I mean... You know, you watch a lot of shows like Will and Grace and stuff, and, you know, where I come from, you know, it's kind of a small town, and it doesn't really have much of a gay scene or anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you just kind of get what the stereotypes are on TV and stuff like that. So, you know, I've... But there's two different gay guys on Will and Grace. There's Will, who's just kind of, like, <laughs> more, you know... Yep. And then there's Jack! <laughs> well, <laughs> well, when I came out to um, my sister, well, in my family, and, you know, my dad was like, you know, is he, uh, like, the, the other one? The... And I was like, <laughs> no, Dad, you know, I'm not, like, Jack. And my sister was like, no, he's like Will. And then... My dad was like, oh, um, you know, Will's gay? So, like, it's just something that I haven't really been exposed to much. Yeah. So what, what, do, you, um, <clears throat> you, what do you want in life? Do you want to, to be married? Do you want children? What do you want? You know, Why like, are you afraid of this gay part of yourself? You know, I think that it would just be a lot easier, yeah, if you were straight. Like, you know, to have a, a family and have a, you know, a, you know, a wife, kids, and, and stuff like that. But, you know, I just want to be like everybody else and just be happy. You know, whether it's with a man, which it's going to be because that's who I am. You know, yeah. I'm gay. I'm not going to be straight, you know. But, you know, I think everyone, you know, deserves happiness and to have be happy. Ever, have you ever been around any type of gay environments, gay clubs, no. gay world? Nope. You haven't? No. Well, uh, Greg wanted a little help. Um, he wanted to see what this world is like, what it is like to be around gay people in groups. Uh, so he asked the Tyra Show to give him a little help, and we sent him out. Check this out. Greg's Aunt Dara wanted him to be more comfortable with his sexuality and thought that a trip to the city might do the trick. You gotta give it a try. I heard about this club and I thought it'd be a good idea for him to check it out. Come on, we'll have some fun. Just so that he could see it's not all about the certain stereotypes he's seen in the media. Hey guys, hey, how's, how's it going? Hi. Hi. Hi, what's your name? The guys that I met at the club are really nice, really genuine, and really friendly, and that's something that I wasn't really expecting. So are you doing anything tonight, or? Um, I don't know, you know, do you have any places that you'd recommend? I had a really good conversation with this guy, Jeff, and he thought that it would be kind of cool for him to show me around the city. Jeff and I walked around the city for a while. He was showing me a couple places to go out to eat, and a few clubs and bars that he thought that I'd enjoy, and it was a really good time. Today has really opened my eyes, and, you know, it's been an incredible experience. You know, I don't know where I'm going to end up in the gay community, but I'm glad that I'm a part of a community that, you know, is accepting of me, and I get to be who I am. All right. So, it seems like it was pretty Yeah, you know, it went nice. really well, and, you know, I'm... You know, it's why I wrote to you guys to help me get, yeah. you know, more comfortable with, you know, a lifestyle that I'm going to be a part of. And I think of. it was very important that my producers put you out in the daytime. <laughs> and it wasn't like some bar that was mm -hmm. like, doo, 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 yeah. you know, <laughs> it was like, you know, it's, it's normal. Gay mm -hmm. people are normal. They do the same thing that straight people do. And that was just a nice daytime place for you to see that it doesn't have to be some stereotype. Mm -hmm. You know, the stereotype is, is a, min a minority. Yeah. Okay, your, your, your auntie is here. Aunt Dara, <laughs> hi. Hi. Um, I, I find it interesting and, and actually positive that you're a, a family mm -hmm. member and that you felt he needed this. Why yeah. did you feel he needed this? Um, well, like I said, we come from like a small town and there's not a big gay community out there and he just really needed to get out there to be exposed to the diverse community and not just have that limited view of what we see at home. Yeah. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Yes. So you don't hate yourself so much anymore. No. We're still working on Shane. That We're working on you, aren't we, Shane? <laughs> Still working on you? <laughs> we'll be right back. Talking to gay men who hate their homosexuality so much that they plan to switch and settle down with women in the future. And here to give them a sneak preview of that future, can you believe it, um, is Elian and Katie. And they've been married for five years, even though Elian is gay. Wow. So this is not down low. This is open and high. And... <laughs> in the open. In the open. <laughs> What's the opposite of down low? <laughs> Up high. Okay. okay. So you tell me about how you, you fell in love with this man. Actually, it was a funny story. Um, I happened to walk my dog down a street in my neighborhood that I never walked down before, and I saw him. And I actually started yelling at him. And What did you yell at him? Hey, you. Hey, you. And he, he turned around, and we started talking. And then he told me he was gay, and I was like, damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> But um, we became best friends, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, we've been together ever since. So you came, okay, so you said, damn, 
Yes. Now, and all women, we've experienced that, right? It's like, oh my God, he is so fine. Oh my God, oh my God. And he finally he's gay. You go, damn, and you walk away. You went, damn. I'm coming. Wait. Back. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. So, did you know he was gay? Yes. When did you know? Um, right away, he told me he had no problem telling me. He was like, you know, I'm gay, and I was like, hmm, a little discouraged, mm -hmm. but. I mean, I kept with it, and obviously I got what I wanted. You so. got what you wanted. I ended up with the man, so. Okay, and um, tell me, okay, you gay, not, weren't attracted to women at all. What did you see in Katie that made you, like, turn? Um, I think it was the love of the friendship that just grew. I mean, when I first, she's gorgeous. This is, I mean, I can appreciate a woman. I can tell if a woman's beautiful or not. But I think just being with her and her loyalty to me as a friend and just our friendship that grew, it was just the love that... If you find something that good, why let it go? Like, okay. I fell in love with a person, not with a gender. And have you ever experienced this type of love before with a um, guy? With a guy? Yeah. yeah. I mean, not, not the love. Yeah, not the um, love. Okay. Because this is different. But um, I've been with men. I've felt affection for men, loved men. But I don't know. She's not like this. Not like this, yeah. Okay, I got to ask you about sex. That's fine. <laughs> do you, do we you have a really healthy, have a healthy sex yeah. life for a married couple. Yeah, really? Yeah, a few times yeah, a week. Yeah, a few times a, few times a week. week. Yes. <laughs> okay, do you have to think about guys? No, I can't. I can't. I've had that question asked many times if I fantasize about men with him with her. I can't. I'll, I'll say I've tried. It doesn't work. I mean, she's gorgeous. I like seeing her for who she is. I okay. Mean. And so you're, you're not attracted to women? Mm -mm. Just? Just her. Like I said, I can appreciate a woman. I can look at a woman. Just but she's her. Hot, Does that make you feel good, like walking down the street? Because special. a woman can be like, <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> all upon him. He's not even looking at all. He doesn't bother me at all. So that makes you feel good. Yeah. Wow. But what about a fine-ass man walking down the street? That's a different story. Okay. <laughs> That's a different... So, so okay. So you do get jealous of other guys. Yes. So I understand that you guys, you have a healthy sex life. You have sex a couple of times a week, but you've also done things a little More, different. Yeah. Tell us, Katie, what y'all do sometimes. Um, we actually, at some points, bring people home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, like we we don't cheat on each other. It's a very open thing. If I Always like somebody, both there. yes. If I like someone or he likes someone, we let each other know. What gender do you bring home? Male, male. Only, male. only male. I'm yeah. not. Into Isn't that funny? You always hear couples bringing home a woman. Yeah. You We're never a little backwards. You never hear them bringing home a man. Yes. So you meet a guy in a bar or something? Or a club or wherever, you know, we might be. And if we both have interests. Who approaches the guy? Usually him. You approach him? It's usually all fine. I can tell when guys have interest in her. I just see her. They come, they flirt, because they usually think I'm her gay friend. I mean, yeah. Because we're out and I'm dancing and she's not. So that will happen. And then I usually say something about it. I'm like, do you like her? And they'll be like, yeah. I'll be like, why don't you give her a kiss? And they look at me, and I'm like, by the way, I'm her husband. And then that's when they, like, they step back, and they're all thinking I'm some kind of a freak or a perv. And I'm all, no, it's really okay. And, I mean, from there, it just built. And it, it just built. Yeah. Okay, so when you guys bring him home, do you have sex with him, Elia? Um, I can say majority of the time, no, because they're usually more leaning towards straight guys. Okay. Um, but we play around, I mean. You play around with the guy, yeah, and then you, you watch him with her. Mm -hmm. Are you looking at him, or are you looking both. at her? Both. You're looking at both. Yeah. <laughs> but I understand you guys are having this fun and living this life, but you're craving something else now, Katie. Yes, what are you craving? monogamy. It's I see a lot of people my age who have families and they're in a monogamous relationship, but I'm to the point where in my life that I don't know if that would ever be possible with him. Because I know he's gay and I know sometimes he has a craving to be with a man mm -hmm. and obviously I can't fulfill that craving for him. So it's, it's just a difficult lifestyle. Do you ever um, say you wanted to bring home a woman? Would you ever want to do that? No. no. No, I'm not into women. Like, I mean, I find women beautiful, yes. but not sexually interested. Well, at least you guys have something in common, right? Yeah. <laughs> Among other things. It's we'll really be right back. We're with gay men who desperately wish they could be straight, and we've been hearing from Elian, who's gay but married to a woman, Katie. And actually, he is okay with being gay because his woman is okay with it, too. They're actually the opposite of everybody that we've been talking with today. Okay. It's not just you all in this relationship. There's somebody else very special. Who's that, Katie? My two-year-old daughter, Emily Elizabeth. So you guys have a daughter. Yes. You have a daughter. Okay. You say <laughs> adorable, absolutely adorable. So you say you're not the typical dad, Elian. What do you mean by that? Um, I don't know. I think our roles are kind of switched in the relationship. Um, I do more of the motherly things or the womanly things. I clean, I cook, I take care of the baby for the most part, um, and then she does like whatever the guy usually would do. I mean, she's I'm the mean one, the one that punishes or whatever, like you know. <laughs> Timeouts and all that kind of mumbo jumbo, and she, the baby always runs to her, like towards like, that. Daddy. Yeah. Yes, but mommy. Yeah, she actually does call me she, daddy. Yeah. She calls you daddy. Yeah, she no, does. she doesn't. Yes, yeah, she does. I come. We from try work. to run like we we don't encourage it at all. We, no. We fight like, it, like, but no, she calls mommy. me mom, and she calls her dad. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> Our daughter's already confused. <laughs> she calls you mom and calls you daddy. Yeah, yeah we, I come we, home from we, work yeah. and she's like daddy, daddy. I'm like mommy, and she's like oh mommy. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, you now you say that, Elian, that your homosexuality is really affecting your marriage. I mean, you guys look happy, but I mean, it, you're yeah, sitting on a couch now on my show, is. but at home it affects your yeah. marriage. Um, sometimes you feel like you would both be happier if you were just friends. Yeah, we've thought about that, because I mean, we, we were great as best friends. It was a wonderful relationship. You, you can share things with each other that a husband and a wife sometimes, I mean, yeah, it's good to be open and share everything, but there's some things you should keep to yourself, mm -hmm. especially if you're married. I mean, especially if you're married. So sometimes I, I kind of miss that old best friend relationship, so it's like I can come tell her anything and everything. Mm -hmm. But I mean, who knows, who, yeah. who knows? And I know you regret it sometimes. You regret marrying him. Yeah, just because I think life might be a little different if I, you know, I was, if I was with a heterosexual man. It's mm -hmm. like, because like I said, I see my friends and they're in, you know, monogamous relationships and sometimes that's something I really crave, but it's like at the same time, I'm so used to my lifestyle the way it is, mm -hmm. I don't think I would be able to change it. What are the issues that come up that you think would not come up if you were with a straight man? Um, well, the fact is I'm a woman and, you know, I, might, I don't have what he needs or what he's, you know, desiring and that sometimes makes me feel like I'm, you know, second place. It's like if maybe if I was a man or if, I don't know. <laughs> Are you ever, I mean, could you ever be just monogamous with her? I don't know. I mean, we were in the beginning for like the first probably two years of our marriage, we were. Um, I don't know. I think now that we've explored more, I'll miss it. Mm -hmm. um, I really just don't know. It'll be something I'm willing to try, but I see it a little difficult because, I mean, like, really said sometimes, it's like that's how I get my fix. <laughs> that's how you get your fix? Yeah, I mean, really. And how often do you have to have sex with a man to stay well, happy like said, in this marriage? Most of the time, I don't have sex with them. Okay, touch yeah. them, kiss them, Whatever, them. yeah, that, um, it doesn't happen often. I mean, it's not something that we go out and we're like, okay, we're going to go find somebody. No, it, if it happens, it happens. I don't know. There's been a few guys. There's been probably four or five guys in the last four years. Okay, sounds like a years. vampire, you know, like you have to get that blood. Not often. <laughs> not often, just need to get that Everyone's taste. Just to get that yeah. taste. Yeah. Well, I, it's interesting because um, I, I, you guys seem happy on the outside, but when you delve a little deeper, you see the pain and you see the truth, right? Yeah, Tyra always finds uh -huh. the truth, and I do see something. Here with us is um, our relationship and sex expert, Cooper Lawrence. Hi, Cooper. Hi, Tyra. So, Cooper, at first, at first I was like, oh, they're fine. They're, this is, works for them. But then the more you talk, especially on Katie's side, you see that she is missing something. Like, how healthy is this? It's think? very complicated. Sexuality is very complicated for a lot of people. Uh -huh. And this is a great example of it. The only difference is here we're talking about a child as well. So you've got to be careful and you've got to really make decisions because now you've got somebody else's life, somebody else's development to worry about. Mm -hmm. And the thing about sexual identity is for some people it can take a lifetime to develop. And the first person you come out to is yourself. Mm. And that, is a, that could be a process for some people that take a lifetime. So you're comfortable with your sexuality, but the difference is you, you've chosen to be with a woman. Ultimately, you may not be happy. And do you want your daughter being raised in an environment with parents that are really not happy? That's what we've Don't said you want her to that. see people being who they mm -hmm. really are deep down inside? That's a much better lesson. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's something what, you guys think about. We have talked about that because that's, that's one of the things we say. I mean, we love each other and we would love to make it work. But if we're going to be unhappy, it's not fair to us and it our daughter. Like, it. just like mm -hmm. she said, it's not fair for our daughter to grow up. I mean, yeah, we can play it all, PG all, we're happy, great, but mm -hmm. kids grow up and kids aren't dumb. They, they see it, mm -hmm. they see the truth, just like all of us, we did. I find you guys very mature and very We've aware. We've through a lot. Yeah, yeah we grew up. I, I can fast. see that, you know, you, you all will make the right decision, whatever yeah. that is for you guys. And when Thank we come you. back, um, I'm gonna come to you, Tia, and, we're, and Cooper's gonna help you figure out why you are attracted to these gay guys that really don't want you. I think you deserve to have somebody that wants you, wants a woman. Once the cave, okay? <laughs> we'll be right back. So today, I'm speaking with men who say that even though they are gay, they hate it, and they want to be straight so much that they've even set a deadline for leaving the gay lifestyle. With me now is Mark, and he says that he's even gone to conferences and classes that help gay people switch to being heterosexuals. Right. Yeah. So, you, okay, how did you find out about a class? Um, I actually didn't do the research. My parents did. Your parents yeah. did? How did your parents find out you were gay? Um, they found out unintentionally, actually. I was on the phone, I was 15, so I didn't get to choose like when I wanted to tell anybody. Um, my dad picked up the phone and he heard the whole conversation I was having with my friend, which had to do with like some guy I was like talking to or something. Um, and then he called me to his room and I'm like, oh my gosh. And, um, and he said, he asked you, are you gay? Yeah, and I didn't really give him a straight up answer, but then he started taking me to like psychologists and conferences where um, ex-gays would give their testimonies and like say how they became straight. But so I don't you'd think go to the conference, you'd sit in a, like in a classroom setting or like a it was, yeah, it was convention like a, center? Big it was room. No, like, a small, like a small room. And then so there'd be gay guys in the audience? Yeah. And then, and then guys on the podium? Yeah, like the, the ones that could turn straight and have um, 
a wife and kids now. And Did like, these guys say that they now don't want men at all? They say that they have, um, like, very rarely they have, like, cravings. But he explained, like, how you have to, like, mentally completely change yourself. And it's, like, a very, very thorough process. You have to basically devote years of your life to it. And, and you want to do this? Um, I don't want to. I just feel like I don't want to waste a lot of that time, like, to do that. Like, I don't want to spend years of my life trying to just change who I am. So what is so, your plan? Um, I'm kind of just going to take it how it comes. Like, I just want to see how it is. Like, I, I've... I mean, living a gay lifestyle, I guess, right now, you would say, you could say, but I don't like a lot of the aspects of it. What don't you like? Um, how the stereotype is, like, you know, promiscuous. Like, they have a lot of partners, and which is true. I've seen that a lot, and I hate that it's, um, it's not very... You can't find, like, monogamy at all. Like, in straight relationships, it's a lot. All them people getting married now, child. Well... <laughs> Everywhere on the news, right? Another gay couple getting married. Another one, another one, another one, another one, another yeah, one. but it's, like, very hard, especially at my age, I guess, too. Like, you know, everyone's so, just looking around to have fun. And, isn't every boy that's 23 years old looking yeah. around to get laid, straight, gay, well, don't matter? Yeah, but I don't, I don't like... <laughs> I don't right. get okay, so... You're living your gay lifestyle right now, but you want a wife. Um, I like the idea, yeah, of having um, a wife someday. I don't know if that's going to happen, necessarily, Okay, but are you attracted to women? Um, I have been attracted to women, but I think I'm more attracted to the idea of... I mean, I've had girlfriends and I've had sexual relationships with them, but I think I like the idea of more of just... Like the man and wife, I think it's because it's been ingrained in me. Like, so the idea of it. So you said yeah. you've had sexual relationships with women. Yeah. Were you attracted to her? Did you look at her breasts and her yeah, pits I, I and go, Yeah, I was attracted yes. to them, but it was it wasn't like it was almost like I was trying to like, like for, almost like trying to force myself to like. Did you have to think about a guy? To yeah, actually. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Okay. So if you decide to be with a woman, you'll stop having sex with guys. Um. I mean, if I yeah, if I decided. Why to are you do just that, stuttering? If I decided to do that, then I definitely would, but. And so you would have sex with a woman and thinking about a man, just so that you wouldn't have sex with a man. Well, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if, I mean, that's the only way that would happen. Do you think that's fair to a woman? No, I don't think that's fair. That's, no. why, I'm, that's why I don't want to do that until, like, I'm, there's some way that you can pursue that without doing that, without thinking. Now, about when this show, she, she knows you're, you're gay now. No, she doesn't. Well, she does now. Well, she <laughs> might. Yes. And everybody knows now. No, she may. Uh, no, everybody. High school, everybody knows. Hi, guys. Family. <laughs> I think, you know, daddy's looking at it going, damn, the seminar didn't oh, work. Oh, he knows, he knows. No, he knows the seminar did not work. <laughs> He's wanting his money back. You know, to me, it's, it, to me it's, I look at you and say that you have to accept you. Yeah. And I hope that it you is, do not just... pull a woman through this, because no, it is I mean, not yeah. fair. I know. I've seen one of my roommates go through that. Tell me what you said about your roommate. I said I've seen one of my roommates go through that. Like Your she, roommate? Yeah, she fell in love with um, the guy that I was talking to that nobody knew that we were dating. Nobody knew what we were dating, and then she was in love with him, but she didn't find out until, like, after we broke up that he was gay. That he was gay? Yeah, and they like, crushed her. Yeah. So I, I want you to, to... You know what you should do? You should go to a seminar about I love myself and I am gay. <laughs> right? That's what you should do. That's the seminar that you need to go to. We'll be right back. Homosexuals who say that they truly hate being gay. Now, I know somebody in the audience has a question. Who has a question? Stand on up. What's your name? Corinne. Corinne, what is your question? My question is to Tia. What, did something ever happen to you to make you attra be attracted to gay men? No. Actually, a funny story. My first boyfriend in the fifth grade turned out to be gay when I met up with him two years ago. Oh. Wow, so fifth grade. What the is that, irony. like 10, 11 years old? Cooper, you have to help us with this, because I don't, I don't understand the psychology, you can stand on up, okay. of why um, she's attracted to gay men, and it goes back to when she's preteen. I think it goes back even further than that. You know, it has to do with her male role models growing up, mm -hmm. and she's somebody that, you know, if, you, if you're with somebody who's gay, you know you're getting rejected. But if you're with somebody straight, then you've got to be who you are, you've got to open up about yourself. That's a really frightening thing for some women. Mm -hmm. And she's a great example of that. You said it yourself, you said that she's a fear of commitment, mm -hmm. and there you go. Fear of commitment. Interesting. So you choose these. I know somebody like this too, that uh, is really attracted to gay guys, and she keeps choosing these gay guys over and over again. And I tell her, girl, that you know, they they're, they're not going to want you back. And she's like, I know, but I just love it. But that's the point. The point is that they know they're not going to get any further with them mm. because that's very frightening to go to the next step in a relationship. Wow. And until she's ready to do that, she's going to continue to date men that just are not going to want her because wow. there's no way a gay man is going to want to be with a woman. Yeah. Anybody else have a question? What's your name? My name's Dominique. Dominique, what's your question? Um, this question's for Ilian. Um, it seems like you have the lifestyle that the other guys want. Do you have any advice for them? Do you guys want Elian's lifestyle? Like where he's married to a woman, <laughs> and, but can still have sex with guys? Shane, are you shaking your head yes? Yeah. Yeah? Tell me, what, tell cool. me what appeals to you about um, Elian's life. Well, he has that relationship with the woman, and he still gets some man thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty much what I want, too. So, so would you recommend this, Elian? No. 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 Talk no, to the guys and tell them why um, not. 
I didn't choose this. I, 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 I was gay when I was little. Since I ever knew sexuality, I knew I was gay. And um, this just happened. It just happened. And she's a great person that I'm not going to let go no matter what. But I'm, like we were saying earlier, I've, as bad as we want to be together, if, if one of us is not being fulfilled or both of us is not being fulfilled in a way, we're not going to reach true happiness. And if we can't reach true happiness, it's not fair to us and it's not fair to our child if you're going to bring mm -hmm. a child into this world. And being gay and straight, it's not like a switch that you can just go, okay, I'm going to be straight now, okay, I'm going to be gay now. It doesn't work that way. If it was that easy, millions of people out there would have the happy lifestyle they all wanted. Exactly, yeah. Okay, stand on up. What's your name? I'm Tammy. Hi, Tammy. What's Hi. your question? Um, my question is for Greg. Since you said that you were always afraid of great gay society, mm -hmm. have you ever tried to not be gay? Um, <clears throat> no. Like, I don't think that, like, you can not be gay. I mean, yeah, you can put, like, on a straight face, and I did that for about, like, you know, most of my life. You know, just trying to, you know, you know, like, was brought up before about making your parents happy. And I tried that, but it just doesn't work. But, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, coming into your own skin and, you know, getting out of that shell and being comfortable with who mm -hmm. you are that yeah. I think is something that, you know, I mean, I still have to work on it, and I'm sure that there's millions of people out there that yeah. really still have to work to on it. To me, it's like you're kind of out of the closet, but you haven't, like, shut the door behind yeah. you yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're out, but open. you're just, you know, it's still kind of there. Like, should I go back in there? Like, what do I do? But, I mean, when you're out, you're out. I mean, there's, once you make that, you know, once you go through that threshold, I mean, there is kind of no turning back, and it's like you just have to be happy with who you are. Yeah. And, well, you these know. guys say that there is some turning back. It's going to happen on 30 years old. Uh, stand on up. Come on over. What is your name? Leah. What's your question? My Leah? question is for Shane. Shane, did you, from the beginning, did you hate being gay, or did you have some type of experience um, that made you develop this hatred for homosexuality? Well, I was raised in a, like, extremely Christian family, and we were raised to believe that gay was, like, there with the devil. So, You're the devil? Well, a lot of things was the devil in my house. Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Wait, Pokemon was the devil? Yeah. Pokemon and gays were the devil. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so and, you were raised that way? And um, then when I was like 15, like it was like really started hitting me. I turned atheist at that point in time. That I just gave up all hope. I was just really depressed because I wanted the lifestyle I was talking about. And I knew I wasn't going to get it. So I just, like stayed in my room for like a whole year straight. Like didn't do anything with my life. And but, like at 17, I just kind of started dealing with it. And now I have my brilliant plan. Your brilliant plan. Yeah. 11 years from now. So you're going to come back on the Tyra show 11 years from now with your children and your wife and stuff? And my dog. Yeah? Oh, Lord. You're going to be miserable, man. You're going to be miserable. We'll, we'll be right back. So we have heard a lot today from men who hate being gay and wish they were straight. But the big question is, can someone ever really just stop? being gay. Um, we want to know what you think, so log on to tyrashow.com and let us know, do you think it is possible for somebody to stop being gay and turn on the switch and say, now I'm straight? I want to know. We'll see you later.